can't we all just enjoy shirtless volleyball, Alonzo? <laughs> Must <laughs> everything be important? The biggest news of all today, of course, is that the video is out for the Lady Gaga song from the Top Gun sequel. Now, it's exactly what you think you're going to get when you ask Lady Gaga to do the theme from the Top Gun sequel. Bring on the bombast. That's what I say. <laughs> I'll tell you, watching this video, and we haven't seen the movie yet. You and I are going to yeah. go see it on Tuesday, yeah. but it's already got me thinking, uh, which uh, has already kind of been in the back of my mind anyway, from the moment they announced the Top Gun sequel, which is like, are we as receptive to what is just sort of blatantly the most expensive recruitment ad for the Air Force or the Navy or whatever ever made now as we were during the Reagan years? It's a different world, of course, but like yeah. I think I think they're mining our nostalgia for the rah-rah optimism of that era and for the fact that Tom Cruise can still do all this crazy shit. Yeah, I, I guess so. I will be interested to see if the film sort of acknowledges the fact that the Cold War is in fact over and that, you know, the very simplistic uh, point of view regarding, you know, foreign policy and the military and whatnot for the first movie might be addressed. I'm not holding my breath, but I just would like to I'm, I'm holding out hope. Can't we all just enjoy shirtless volleyball, Alonzo? <laughs> Must everything were, be important? If it were <laughs> just shirtless volleyball, yes. But you know what? Uh, we live in the world we live in. What can I tell you? We're going to find out. So we're going to see that next Tuesday, and we'll talk yeah. about that very, very soon. So that is out. Also out today is the trailer for David Cronenberg's Crimes of the Future, which yes. looks like good, messed up Cronenbergian body horror. Uh, yeah, apparently, if you are sitting in the first three rows, they will give you a tarp. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the splash zone, baby. <laughs> Those tickets cost extra. <laughs> so, yeah, that's opening in the U.S. on June 3rd, but it's about to premiere at the Cannes Film Festival. Yeah, speaking of dangerous audience interactions, did you see the video of Dave Chappelle getting attacked on stage at the Hollywood Bowl? I didn't. I read about it. It is shitty that somebody tried to attack him. It is also shitty that Chappelle used the uh, the opportunity to make another crappy joke about trans people. So win win, everybody. Yeah, no, that made me kind of cringe, too. I'm like, dude, just like take the moment and acknowledge it for how bizarre it was. And that felt like twisting the knife a little bit but is that yeah. him making fun of the image of himself in that uh, moment I don't you know, know i'm sure that's going to be the defense if it comes up but it's like it's just that that this is always the go-to like just make the chris rock joke and leave it there you know <laughs> yeah well also the friends of his backstage who beat the shit out of this dude like yeah. broke his arm Oh, charming. In more bad behavior, we have now Amber Heard testifying in the Johnny Depp defamation suit. He is, of course, suing her for $50 million, saying that she has wrongly accused him of domestic abuse, and um, she's countersuing him for $100 million. She tearfully took the stand this past week and described in um, harrowing detail how he sexually assaulted her with a bottle. <sighs> I have been trying to not pay any attention to this oh, I'm because sorry. no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it, look, it's out there and it's happening and people are talking about it, but uh, there are no winners here. Like it, this just feels like this entire relationship is sort of fraught with stuff that, that, that both people are, are, were party to. Um, this sounds like grotesque domestic abuse. It also sounds like, a lot of other things that are going on and there's certainly you know a, an element of people on the internet who will take any opportunity to like stand a celebrity especially when that comes with a big ball of misogyny so i i just i i i feel like we're all better off we were all better off not knowing any of this uh, and, and you know, I, I don't know that this is the kind of thing that anybody's going to come away with saying, oh, well, this is, this is going to be good for, you know, future victims of domestic violence or future victims of, you know, whatever. I, I, I don't know what we're supposed to get out of this.
this. No, and I appreciate that. And I know it's like an uncomfortable thing to talk about and there are no good answers here, but I do feel like we need to acknowledge it because it is a thing that is happening no, it's a thing that in is our happening, world. Sure. We have a little follow-up for you on the Met Gala, which we talked about on Tuesday. So Kim Kardashian wore the dress that Marilyn Monroe wore when she sang happy birthday, Mr. President to JFK yes. in 1962, right? Famously, she lost a bunch of weight for it, whatever. But there's this really fascinating article in the LA Times about how all these fashion and costume and like historical costume experts are appalled yeah. that she was able to wear this thing that is 60 years old and of great, you know, cultural historical significance out right. in the world and not so because, not because it's kim kardashian but because one does not do that with garments that are being you know protected and 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 preserved right and it, a lot of their their questions about this came not just from a like how could she cultural perspective but like from a, a tangible scientific argument that fabrics change and yeah. Thing, she could take as great a care of it as she wants. Everyone had gloves on that were handling it, right? They sure. could be as gentle as possible. Although apparently she couldn't get the zipper up all the way. That's why she's right. wearing like a fur around her, her rear end because yes. she couldn't fit into it totally. And then she changed into a replica afterward. But like, even still, like once you take that thing out and put it on the body, it is changed irreparably. Yeah, you know, so. like I, 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 you've 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 been to the Academy Library, right? You know, when when you are handling stuff that is older, not only are you wearing the gloves, but like it's in a climate controlled room, and right. it's there are all these very specific things, and that's just for like paper, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cloth and beads and all the things that are involved in 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 a fa in fashion and a gown, like that's that has to be sort of preserved and the problem here is that this is the, that dress does is not part of the met collection it's not in the smithsonian it's at fucking ripley's believe it or not in orlando i'm in not orlando. making this up <laughs> they own that dress they bought it at auction and as the owners of it can do what they want with yeah. it which in this case is let kim kardashian or anyone wear it out and about in the world and so you know yeah if i were a costume archivist i would be horrified too yeah. because that's just like precisely the kind of thing that you don't want to have happen. And as several people pointed out, if she has the replica, wear the replica, right. you know? If that's right. the homage here, but it's not an homage. It's like further commodification of this woman for whom that plagued her her entire life. And then today we learned that the, not only did she wear that nude colored bead dress, but mm. she also wore after the Met Gala, she changed into a third dress which was Marilyn Monroe's actual dress that she wore to the Golden Globes, this green sequined halter dress. And so she's got pictures of herself holding, like, I think she's holding the actual Golden Globe and wearing the actual dress. So it's like beyond cosplay. It's like beyond homage. <sighs> it's just gross. I have some good news for you. Oh, please. And that is that Duran Duran is finally in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> I thought of you when I heard that <laughs> announcement. Thank God. Um, so we have that. So Dolly Parton, of course, yes. also got in, although she so graciously tried to bow out because she felt what? she didn't belong. I, or was that like just the shrewdest way of reminding right? people that she was on the ballot in the first place? Who knows? Oh, little either, on me. Oh, either Trina. way, it works. So well Duran played, Duran, Ms. Parton. Yes, it's, it's, it's a pretty amazing um, lineup of people all from yeah. our generation. Yeah, of Pat our Benatar. And... Right, Pat Benatar, Lionel Richie, Dolly Parton, Duran Duran, um, and then the Rhythmics. And mm -hmm. Eminem got in, first ballot, Eminem. Okay. So, and Carly Simon. Yay, Carly Simon. So that's a good thing, too. Um, one thing that you and I did not notice when we were watching Moon Knight, and we'll talk about the Moon Knight finale on our <laughs> Patreon today, they hid QR codes in three of the six episodes. And I guess it wasn't so conspicuous as to be glaring, but it was like germane to whatever setting they were in. So in episode five, when Mark is in the asylum, quote unquote, and mm -hmm. going through various doors to look at memories of his life, there's like a picture, there's like a QR code right there next to whatever the hospital door number is. Anyway, and if you scan it, you get access to a free Moon Knight comic online. I, I've never felt older. 
<laughs> we're now at a place where they're putting QR codes in TV shows to provide to, to connect you to extra content. I'm like, I, I unless I'm like sitting at a restaurant and they just tell me here, there's the QR code because we don't do menus anymore. Yeah. <laughs> like I do not scan QR codes as a general no. rule. So, you know, but apparently this is a, this is going to be a thing now. I didn't even notice it. And now Nick wants to go and see what it is. So I guess we have to do that. The trailer for the Obi-Wan series came out this week. We'll mm -hmm. be talking about that starting on May 27th, of yes. course. The trailer for the Weird Al movie starring Daniel Radcliffe came out. Which is going straight to Roku channel. Am I yeah, correct in that? That's, okay. Yeah, that's strange. There's an illustrated children's book of Petite Maman, the movie Petite Maman, which is out this week, which is playing at the Bell Court. Our friends yes. this week, the uh, movie house shout out, the Bell Court in Nashville, which Alonzo loves. Um, you can go see it there and at several other great art house theaters throughout the country. But if you cannot get to a theater and you want to cry by yourself in the comfort of your own home without being judged by a room full of strangers. Oh, don't be crying too. <laughs> but yes, to. there's, there is a children's book by Celine Siama. Um, and you know, I had been saying from the beginning, if you have a child who can handle subtitles, take your kid to this movie and now you can read it to your kid at home. Mother's day is this weekend. If That's not now, right. when?